welcome to e-magazine. I'm your host, Brenda Nyami Chaba. Now, a few years later, we have moved back into a space where the Kenyan TV industry is predominantly producing Swahili TV series in a bid to bring back stories and characters that are relatable to Kenyans. Now, today on e-magazine, we get to explore this a bit deeper as more and more Swahili series keep coming up. How does one create a mark in the growing Swahili telenovela space? Now joining me in studios today is James Kahindi who is a producer and as well as a scriptwriter of some of the Swahili series out on our Kenyan TV screens. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm fine, how are you? Hope you're excited to be on your magazine. Oh, big time exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So James, I want us to just go back to, uh, and uh, Start to understand, you explain to me the concept and creation of the series better. You know, how did you guys come about this series and how were you able to execute it to be up to season two, going to season three, right? Yes, yes. Uh huh. Um, Petty, the whole idea of us creating the, the story was uh, mainly to have a uniquely African story that yes. is being told. We are having a lot of series on our air, but if you notice, most of them are either set in Nairobi or set in Mombasa mm -hmm. and mostly in the urban setting. Mm -hmm. So when we were coming up, and uh, my producer, Daudi Anguka, and the creator yeah. of the show, as he was coming up with that idea, uh, we, the team of writers, were burdened with having to create a very uniquely Kenyan thing mm -hmm. that has not been done in Nairobi, that has not been done in Mombasa, that has not been done anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So that is where we came up with this idea of Pete. And the story itself uh, just revolves around uh, these two brothers who their bond of brothership is tested when their father dies. Mm -hmm. And now there is a tussle for leadership because there wasn't a clear successor to who is going to sit on the throne. Mm -hmm. So all that and is mixed with the dynamics of love and the intrigues of our society where we're exploring themes of greed and love and uh, culture and uh, social integration and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that is where the whole tapestry of uh, Pete came in. Wow, it's actually today. really a nice storyline. I feel like it's, it's something actually a lot of Kenyans can relate to because it happens here. Yeah, yeah. We have that happening in some of our families. Now, what was the reception like when Pete first aired in 2017? Was it a good reception? Did guys enjoy it? Uh, yes, it was, it was, I could say we got a fairly nice mm -hmm. reception from the people. And um, that also showed us that uh, there is a, a past or rather okay. a missing link for that kind of content uh -huh. on, on, on our TV screens. Because um, people are really taking up the unique story and the, the costuming and the culture mm -hmm. that we're portraying on Pete. So it has gotten a really nice review and I think that is the reason why you also gone to season two. Hopefully yeah. season three, uh -huh. if God wills. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now would you say having a platform such as Maisha Magic, um, you know, it helps initiate that growth of product for the the growth of creation and production of you know Swahili content in Kenya. Of course, and not only Swahili content, mm -hmm. of local content in Kenya, mm -hmm. because what companies like Maisha Magic are doing is uh, creating us the platform not only to showcase, but also putting resources in the hands of producers so that mm -hmm. they can produce quality, mm -hmm. quality movies and quality productions. Because over time, that has been the challenge that can our productions compete in terms of quality in the world stage, in the international stage. And right now we are seeing um, our producers are using the same kind of equipments we find in South Africa. Are Nigeria. using the same, yeah, Nigeria to some level, even in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think. So we stepped up now. We stepped up big time, and it's cause of uh, companies like Maisha Magic, which give us that kind of platform mm -hmm. to showcase what we have. Okay. Yeah. Now you're a scriptwriter of you know Swahili, Swahili series, content itself. Mm -hmm. What would you say makes Swahili content very unique in Kenya, apart apart from the language itself? Sure. Because, uh, um, like you said, when I was uh, explaining the Peter story, you uh -huh. told us this is something that happens with us uh -huh. uh, on our normal day-to-day -day interactions. We have stepbrothers who we don't like. We, <laughs> you know, fathers who are favoritism. Uh -huh. So, minus the language, it is really the themes also and the stories that we are exploring that makes it authentically Kenyan. Because these are things that um, normal Kenyan people go through, you know, uh, having facing those challenges. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, uh, I think that is it. Well, what kind of themes do you mostly like, explore? And when, when it comes to, you know, telenovelas for Swahili, like, do they always have to be dramatic? <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> the, the, the genre of telenovela itself dictates us uh -huh. to, to have to be romantic. Okay. And um, th that is also what the audience dictates, because um, our Kenyan audience really love uh, mm -hmm. to, to get love stories and romantic stories. Mm -hmm. So if the audience detects that, that is what we provide for the audience. Okay. But we are seeing we are moving into different spaces where we are exploring sci-fi and thrillers and that kind of genre. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, to Kendela produce, 
then the masses also are going to, to grow as well. Yeah, to grow as well Reflect. and to accept that kind of Very true. content. Very yeah. true. Now, obviously, the creation of Swahili content in Kenya as a whole, you know, um, you have series like Better Than Selena as well, has put you guys on a, uh, on a platform where you're able to compete with Bongo film industry because a lot of Kenyans turn to Bongo film industry to watch Swahili yes, relatable yes. content. Mm -hmm. Now, is this a challenge for, you know, the Kenyan space for telenovelas for Swahili or it's also something that's going to, you know, push them? to grow further? Um, it's both a challenge and an opportunity. Because mm -hmm. um, if we are being looked at right now in that kind of industry, although in my opinion, in my personal opinion, you're supposed to be way far ahead than Tanzania. Yes, at least. we should be. Yes, but they have produced more content, so kudos to them. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenge because the more content they produce, then they are coming into our market. Mm -hmm. The good thing about that is if our standards are up to theirs and our story are relatable to theirs, mm -hmm. then we also have an opportunity to penetrate into their market. Mm -hmm. And um, something like Pretty, those are some of the things that it has enabled us to do, uh, or rather enabled the producer to do, because mm -hmm. we are seeing a scenario where we are even having fans in Tanzania, mm -hmm. we are having fans in Rwanda, Uganda. Yeah. So basically, in as much as it is a challenge to have those people coming into our market, mm -hmm. when we produce good content, which also gives us the opportunity to explore their market because then we are sharing, you know. You're sharing the platform. Yeah. So you've mentioned that one of the major reasons Bongo film industry is way ahead. They have a lot more content. Yeah. They produce a lot more content. What do you think is holding us back? The um, most? Mostly finances, mm -hmm. I would say. Not expertise. We, we, we have expertise. So it is finances. And um, in two ways. Most of the times we don't get finances because we are not business people uh -huh. as film producers. Mm -hmm. So I will walk into a bank to ask for a loan, but then I don't have a business plan. I don't mm -hmm. have, you know, the, the corporate things uh -huh. in uh -huh. check first before I get those finances. Mm -hmm. So that has been the main challenge. And um, the other main challenge is after you have produced, where are you going to sell the content? Mm -hmm. So there is also a challenge of the market itself. Because right it's now- limited. Very limited. Because right now our supply chain is ends up at the broadcasters. Mm -hmm. uh, very rarely will you find Kenyan movie producers selling directly to the consumer or um, selling directly to a person, you know. Mm -hmm. I will challenge you to tell me when was the last time you saw a billboard for a movie. Or when for, was, for a Kenyan movie? Yes, for a Kenyan uh -huh. movie. When was the last time you just walked and saw a movie being sold somewhere or even if you were to ask me, I'm a producer, uh -huh. and you were to ask me... Well, I saw Petty on Pickerwood, so... Yes, on Pickerwood. <laughs> but again, uh -huh. like I was saying, that is the broadcaster yeah, supply channel. Yes. Yeah. So we need to broaden our, our market, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we also need to diversify our mm -hmm. supply chain to, to, to be able to achieve that. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we were at a point where, as Kenyans, the Kenyan um, you know, TV industry, film industry, we were trying to mimic the Western space because we felt like that was what was going to sell. Mm -hmm. But now we have transitioned to, to having Swahili content. Yeah. Why do you think we've moved to that? Because... Um, I think as a people, we are starting to appreciate ourselves mm -hmm. first. Because mm -hmm. uh, for a long time, the West set the standards in terms, true, of, yeah. in terms of quality and in terms of what story. So much so that if the world was to end today, you would believe the American army is supposed to serve us. Uh -huh. you know? So <laughs> that kind of thing. But now, nowadays, we are coming to realize that we have our own stories that we can tell and that are interesting. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, that are appealing to the entire world. That true, someone yeah. from Kenya can watch and you take it to even Scandinavia they can watch. Because I believe if you were to make a movie about Luanda Magere, it will be the same movie like Achilles from Troy. Mm -hmm. And it will permeate all those cultures. It will not just be a Luo or a Kenyan story, but someone in Scandinavia will relate to it because it's a hero story. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, so now we are, we are moving on that. And of course, the increase in our production quality also is enabling us to play on a much different platform that you did five, ten years ago. Wonderful. Yeah. Now let's move back into, you know, um, understanding a bit more what you try to portray in the Swahili content, you know, this, the Swahili culture, as mm. we said. But what is the Swahili culture? How does someone like me from Nairobi relate with the content you put based on people from Mombasa? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, that's an interesting mix. <laughs> <laughs> right? How do you keep this uh, audience in Arabic to watch? Um, I mean, of course, when you produce such content like Pate, yeah. um, obviously, people in Mombasa will definitely watch and relate to be like, yes, yes, this yes, is this is. But an Arabian like me, how do you, ha how do I, how do you have a grasp on such an audience? Um, yeah, there are many ways of doing that. We, we try as much as possible to, one, keep the Swahili simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <people> like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. 
So we try to keep the language simple, and then we try to depict things of the Swahili culture in 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 their day-to-day -day occurrences okay. in the story, mm -hmm. like their dress code will will depict that they are Swahili, mm -hmm. like um, the background itself. We are, we are shooting the place on an island and it has coconut trees and everything behind mm -hmm. it. So that in itself also endears to the audience. And then of course there's the you know accent of how the people speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we're also trying to infuse small things like uh, foods, like in the story people eat a lot of fish because mm -hmm. they're by the sea mm -hmm. and uh, wali mm -hmm. you know, and such like things. So we're trying to, to showcase that kind of culture and we're trying to go above and just sh tell people from uplands that in course, it's all about Majini and <laughs> Waganga. Because we have a weird perception yes. of the majority. And I don't blame you because that has been the narrative that has uh -huh. been portrayed over uh -huh. a long period of time. Whatever content that has been coming out, that has been a central theme. So, Sima Kosaya, when you are na Lima Kosaya, you are Tengeza, because there's a lot of culture that you can depict mm. that is way over and above witchcraft and things like that. And uh, productions like Pete, we are trying to, you know. Mm -hmm. things like that on the air yeah wonderful <laughs> now we're going to take a short commercial break but when we come back we're going to drop a bit deeper into where telenovelas for swahili in kenya are do not go anywhere you're watching e-magazine <laughs> 